I recently got an email from Amy who is having trouble chewing up a rough turn bowl. This can be really, really ugly, if you know what I mean. I've got a video on uh, completing a rough turn bowl, but it's eight years old and the quality is terrible. So I'm going to redo that video. The topic today is completing a rough turn bowl. And I'm going to open up this box and see what I have in here. Um, the bowls in here are from an elm tree that we got uh, probably four or five months ago. So let me open this up and we'll see what's in here. And I'll pick one of them and complete it on my lathe here. All right, this is just like Christmas. It is Christmas. All right. Now, I have a note on the outside of my box here to look at this in October. Well, it's almost the end of December right now, and uh, it's plenty of time to revisit these. I did look at them in, in October, and I can tell from uh, the tenon on this and also the bowl that it's gone quite oval. So there's a good, a good subject. And I've got four or five bowls in here. Let me just unpack these. Here's a nice one. This is a little bit bigger. There's a date on the bottom of this, August 2020, August 1st. So, okay, there's another one. And what else do we have in here? Here's a little bit uh, smaller one. And even though that's a pretty small bowl, the tenon has gone very much oval. So let me readjust and I'll put one of these on my lathe and we'll complete it. And I'll show you at least my process for doing this. Now, let me show you my setup here. I have a waste block and I usually turn these out of alder or poplar. This is poplar because I can see the green in there. And I've got this chucked up. Let me just take this out and I'll show you what I have. I have an expansion recess and for some reason I have many of my friction drives um, turned to this dimension for these chuck jaws and I just put that on there in the expansion mode and this doesn't have to be real tight because it's not going to come loose or anything. So here's my bowl, my rough turn bowl blank. That'll fit right on there. Now what I'll do is I'll save this friction drive and I'll use this when I'm finished with this particular bowl. I'll uh, finish the inside first and then I'll put some protection on here. I'll put some shelf liner or paper towel on there. And what I have in my tail center, my live center here, it's the same live center I used when I rough turned this bowl. I can see the indentation in the bowl. So we'll crank up the, the quill here a little bit. Find that little indentation right there. And again, I've got the date on this August 1st. 2020, so that was uh, quite a while ago. I'm going to turn my lay speed down. Let's turn that on. So there's an out of balance bowl. It's uh, plenty dry, and I've got it between a dry block and a live center. And the first thing I want to do is true up the tenon. And I can probably put it in. To these chuck jaws I've got in here right now. So let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you how I do this and I'll show you the tools that I would use for truing up this spigot. In the words of Elvis Presley, don't be cruel to a tenon that's true. That's right, we're talking about truing up a tenon and I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of go over grain. We have uh, the possibility of putting a tenon into uh, a spindle or cross grain work. So let me readjust my camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, now what I have chucked up into my lathe is a spindle. It's an end grain piece like you might find in a lidded container. And you might argue that it's easier to put a tenon on 
uh, an ingrain piece than it is a cross grain piece. So I'm going to do that real quickly here. The grain runs the length of the bedways, parallel with the bedways. As I use a skew chisel to make this tenon, I can cut in this direction and I can use this skew chisel uh, as a cutter. And that's perfectly fine. And you could use a spindle gouge, you can use a parting tool. If I hold my tool perfectly uh, horizontal, parallel with the floor, that's scraping. And I'll do that more in the cross grain example of uh, forming a tenon. But here I'm going to cut. I'm going to lower my tool handle. And it's as simple as that. All right. And the last one maybe we should look at is simply a spindle gouge. But since this is an end grain piece, I can cut from this direction. With a cross grain piece that I'll show you next, you can't do that. All right, now my next example, I've got a waste block and it's cross grain. All right, this could be a little bowl or a platter or something, but anyway, the grain runs perpendicular to the bedways. And I've got the grain marked with pencil on this little piece of maple. Now I'm gonna take that off because it's distracting. All right, that looks better. Now, on my bowl that I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna put a compression tenon on this, and that'll be coming up very soon, I promise you, but we have to look at the grain, okay? And how do we present a tool? Let me, let me show you how I would do this with a gouge. And we could use a bowl gouge. Let's see what I've got in my, my uh, quiver. Quiver. Now I probably would go to a spindle gouge. All right. And I'm not gonna go into the wood in this direction because I'm gonna be hitting end grain. All right, so I'm gonna be going right here and that's cutting across the grain. So the same thing with my bowl, when I get to that point, uh, this is cross grain, so I would approach it in a similar manner. Now let's uh, turn this on. So I'm gonna just make a tenon way out here. I do have chuck jaws that probably would fit that. Now, very important, this surface right here, this, uh, I call it a flat spot, okay? Your chuck jaws need to connect right there. And that's gotta be perfectly flat. And there's my tenon. Here's a, a small uh, parting tool. And with this tool, I got the, the nose of it, where the cutting edge is, I got that angled so I could actually go in there and form a pretty good tenon. Now here's an important part of this, since this is cross grain work. I really wouldn't do this, okay? Um, and what you shouldn't do, you know, you can, you can do it, but you're gonna have a problem, is if I approach this uh, piece of cross grain work with a cutting tool, uh, you know, I'm going to be in trouble when I get around to the end grain. I'm going to get a catch and a dig in and it's not going to be pretty. I could use this uh, as a scraping tool, totally horizontal. But I don't think that really is the best way to do it because you're really just scraping. I'll just do a little bit of that. And, and I'm actually getting a pretty good shaving off that. but. Keep in mind what I'm saying here, very, very important. Don't use this in a cutting orientation. All right, let's put our bowl on there. I think you get the idea. Let's put the bowl on there and we shall proceed. So I'm gonna put my waste block 
uh, friction drive back on. Put my tail center back up. Okay, I think I'm running, running fairly true, although this is all out of balance. And that's what I've got to do. Now, we're back to the bowl. I spent some time explaining uh, our approach for forming a tenon on here. And really what I've got to do, got to go back to this tenon and true it up. Let's take a look. Put a pencil line on there with my, and I put a pencil line on there just to kind of show you I'm hitting right there, I'm not hitting there, I'm hitting right here. So it's oval. All right, now what I've got to do is true that up. So I'm going to go back to my spindle gouge. All right, now the difficult thing with starting your cut on this tenon that's out of balance is uh, starting your cut. All right, so you can hear that quite out of balance. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to true up this surface. That gives me a nice place to start my, my cut. So let's do that. All right, and all I was doing was scraping that. So I'm gonna level off this area right here, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just take my spindle gouge and scrape that. And you can hear how out of balance that is. I'm turning right at 1,000 RPM, so. All right, now the next thing I need to do is really deal with this area right here. Okay, very, very much out of balance. Uh, let me show you a couple different ways you can approach this. Now, when you're truing up an out of balance dry bowl like this, you're gonna do a lot of scraping. So the first thing I can do, I can just simply scrape that, turn my gouge on its side, if I have it open like this, this opposite wing is gonna catch and I'm gonna get a catch. So I'm gonna just scrape this. And perhaps you can hear as that gets um, into that area where I'm trued up. Right here it's not. And there we go. Now, let me go back one for one second. This is cross grain, okay, perpendicular to the bedway, so I'm cutting across the grain. If I cut in this direction, I'm gonna have a problem. I'm gonna get a catch in that end grain. Now, I was just scraping, and that's, that's okay. It ain't pretty, but it, you level off that surface, and I think you can see uh, from that angle that's level, and I'm getting to this area right here that wasn't all the way around. So let me do a push cut, and I'm gonna come out here, right into this area right here, and do a push cut. And I could probably complete this tenon just right now with my spindle gouge. I need to make one more pass. Right there, now. Here's another important point. As I make this cut and I hit this opposite shoulder, I need to close my flute. If I'm open too much, and that wing hits that opposite uh, area right there, 
I'm going to get a catch, possibly. And that tenon is ready to go. I could use other tools. I could use my, my parting tool. Let's just see that. All right, and that works pretty good. And again, I'm going to mention that this particular little parting tool, I've got the cutting edge angled for this uh, specific reason. I can get in there and that forms the angle I need for my tenon. And I'm all ready to go. I can reverse this into my chuck jaws. Now I'm just showing you my process for doing this. For completing a dry roughed out bowl. Okay, sometimes these are called a twice turn bowl. Now, uh, I'm going to wear my face shield. Sometimes I don't feel it's uh, absolutely necessary, but this I'm going to use my face shield and I'm going to go to a larger bowl gouge. So 5 8 inch bowl gouge and I'm going to scrape this entire area. I'm really not going to be cutting this just because it's out of balance and I can't do the and I can't get in here to do a proper push cut anyway because my tail center is in the way. Let's see what, uh, we're, we're turning right at 900 RPM. I think that's fast enough. Now I will have other opportunities to work on this surface. It's pretty rough, it's just a scrape there. I couldn't really get in there with, with a, a push cut. I can right here. Now I've got a little detail on this rim area that I want to save. I'm still oh, a good inch thick, I've got plenty of room there. The other thing I can do while I'm here is I can practice a shear scrape. I can take my bowl gouge and really, really lower the handle so that cutting edge is in a shearing orientation. I'll turn the lathe speed up just a little bit. All right, and those are the shavings that you want. Little spiral shavings. All right, I'm going to deal with the rim here. I'm going to say it, I can go back. I'm going to reverse this an, another time to work on this outside. And that's my process. Right now I'm going to find a smaller bowl gouge. This is a half inch bowl gouge. And what I'm using, um, these are my latest acquisitions. These are robust tools, tool steel, uh, and they are really, really nice. <clears throat> Let me take this out of here. This is also the, the collet set up for, for robust, and you can get on their website and, and buy those. Here's the half inch bowl gouge, and I've got that marked in red. That means it's a bowl gouge, just for me and my students. This area right back here has been flattened off at the factory when they make this tool. So this area won't interfere with your one-way uh, sharpening system. Ordinarily, when you have a round shank, you can't get your, your jig all the way back in there. All right, now, going to a smaller tool right in here, and I can do a push cut on this. Now, way out here on the rim, I don't have to worry about hitting my tailstock as I do a push cut here. And even though this is out of balance, I'm going to just go for it, do a push cut. I'm right at a thousand RPM. The other thing I've got to do is 
I've got to touch up this area right here. That is a serrated knife edge. It's going to cut you very, very badly right there. Let's take care of that. So my bowl gouge on its side, not like this. Keep that cutting edge in a scraping position. one more point here. Let's talk about scraping. I'm taking one of my box master scrapers, changing the tool steel to the other end, and here is my rule about scraping in most situations. If I don't have any torn grain, okay, there's a little bit right there, but for the most part, if I don't have torn grain, I'm okay for me to use a scraping tool. I got some little ridges from my tool in there. Let's just apply this negative rake scraper and clean up that surface. A little bit more speed. All right, and like I said before, I can reverse this one last time and touch up any imperfections. And I like that, I, that came out pretty well. Little spot right there. Anyway, let's put this in the chuck jaws. So I'm gonna just take my uh, friction drive out and with any luck, my tenon spigot will fit. Yeah, I think so. I like these big hefty chuck jaws. This is a Nova chuck. All right, all right, that works very nicely. I'm looking down here to see if I got any gaps. I always like to turn my lathe on and little just a little bit out of balance um, all right we'll just be okay with that for the time being now dealing with the inside here the first thing I'm going to do I like to true up the different surfaces that I'm working on first thing is this rim right here and the rim can get you into trouble all right so I would recommend uh, finding a, a good bowl gouge. So I'm going to use a pretty big bowl gouge. This is a 5 8 inch gouge and um, I could probably use a smaller tool on this rim but since this is the one I'm going to use on the inside I'm going to just go with this to begin with. So let me just show you as I got the camera backed off how I would do this. My flute is almost completely closed. You have to be really careful. You can get a bad catch on the rim. So we're going to true the rim up here. I'm going to just scrape that to begin with. And I'm turning the speed down. It's about 700 RPM. Okay, now you can tell from this pass I'm making that I'm fairly trued up on at least part of that rim. I'm going to keep going. Turn, turn the speed up just a little bit.
All right, let's revisit the grain on this. As you can see, the grain runs right here, cross grain. And if I approach this piece of wood from the outside going in like this with whatever tool, I'm going to be dealing with uh, end grain right here and on the opposite side of this right here. So you have to be really careful. So what I want to do is I want to present my tool right here. Now, here's the issue. Um, either cutting or scraping, I'm dealing with end grain. Okay, so I'm not sure if it matters a whole lot which one you do. I'm going to just keep scraping this a little bit. But just to show you that it can be done, I'm going to take a spindle gouge and cut this surface. Alright, I know what you're thinking. I just told you not to go in that direction with a cutting tool. Uh, to me, it's a compromise. I probably didn't get an extremely clean cut with my spindle gouge that I was just using, but it does okay. And I need to touch that up just a little bit, but I, I angled my rim in somewhat. Uh, I like that kind of profile. So now I'm going to finish up the inside of my bowl. And I think I need a little bit longer tool rest right here. So I occasionally get questions about a curved tool rest. To be honest, I really have not had a lot of experience with a curved tool rest. I'm going to take my tail center and put it on the floor. Okay, now I've got my camera backed off quite a bit so you can see my tool and what uh, position I'm holding that as I present the cutting edge to the bowl. I'm still fairly thick, probably approaching an inch all the way down through there. So the first thing I need to do is true that up. Now, um, as we look at scraping and cutting, oh boy, I'm going to try to cut this. Because scraping it just is, uh, to me, it's a little bit difficult and a little bit sketchy in terms of safety. You get out here and you're scraping like this, you can get a bad catch. So for me, I'm better off cutting this. I'm right at 1000 RPM. All right, now, the last sound you heard, that bouncing in there, that was my uh, cutting edge losing bevel contact. It's pretty good in here, but once I got down here close to this rim, I had a problem. I'm going to go to my grinder, and uh, I'm going to cut off a little bit more of the heel of this tool and sharpen the cutting edge. Now, I put this in my Wolverine sharpening jig. And I've got a good cutting edge on there, and perhaps you can see the heel. I've taken a lot of that heel away, and I've shortened the bevel. 
and hopefully I can make it around that bottom without uh, a lot of vibration because I lose the cutting edge. So let's do a little bit more cutting. And if I have a problem, I have another tool I can, I can show you. So I want to clean the rest of this up. And you can see how I, I did a pretty good job cleaning that up with a cut, not a scrape. Okay, luckily I've got a lot of uh, thickness here. I'm going to go to another bowl gouge because I was having a little trouble uh, maintaining the cutting edge because I was hitting the rim with my tool. All right, now I'm going to use another tool. This particular tool has a very short bevel. Let's see if you can see that here. And the angle is probably 60 degrees. On that previous bowl gouge, the uh, nose angle was closer to 40. So with this tool, I can have my handle farther out and still maintain the bevel all the way through. So I'm going to start right in here. And I got to really swing my handle to begin that. stop right there. You can see how far away from the rim my, my tool is. So I'm rubbing the bevel right there and all I got to do is maintain that angle all the way through to the center. Now I think I'll do a little bit of work off camera. I'm still a little bit thick, especially right here. All right, I'm gonna take a second, kind of review where we're at right now. I spent a little bit of time off camera fine tuning this uh, surface here. And I think I'm very happy with that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sand and my procedure is at this point do the finish sanding and apply one or two or three coats of an oil on a salad bowl like this. All right. So let me do that and uh, I'll do that off camera. Save you from watching that. I have a, a little bit of an undercut right here. I'm happy with that. It gives you a, a nice place to pick that bowl up. It's going to be a a nice salad server. All right, now I'm going to show you just a little bit of sanding here. I'm on my other robust lathe and I've got my dust collection chute uh, attached to the lower part of the bowl. And it's a good idea just to line that up where your dust is heading. Got a mask on, I got my drill going. Now, this is pretty hard wood, this elm, and I'll probably start with 150 if I can. I don't want to make scratches in there with sanding discs that are just a little bit too coarse, but I go through the grits and I don't skip any. And I probably go up to 320 on a bowl like this. That's probably all I need to do. So I'm on the outside and I'm going to touch up just a little bit of that rim while I'm here. When I'm on the inside of a bowl like this with my drill, I like to turn the lathe 
forward and for me that's a better sanding position and if I'm on the outside I'll turn the lathe in reverse and sand the outside. Now this video is all about the procedure for completing a rough turn bowl after it's dried. And part of my procedure is sanding the inside of the bowl when it's in this position. I can do a lot of work with the lathe spinning, sanding, and right now I'm going to apply a little finish. So depending on what I'm doing in my shop, I may apply two or three coats of an oil. In this case, it's a salad bowl or a food server. So I'm going to put an, a drying oil on there. And in a second, I'll get to the inside and you'll see that grain just kind of explode. It's just really, really pretty. Nothing special about this grain. It's not a burl or anything, but uh, it's very nice and very satisfying after you've done all this work to apply a finish and see what it looks like. Now this particular oil that I'm applying is what I would call a Sam Maloof mixture. It always has uh, paint thinner. This one has a little varnish, linseed oil. And it's a drying oil, which is very important to me. There you are. But one of the most important things any wood shop can have is a good dust collection system. And I am blessed with one I bought 25 years ago, but it does a really nice job of taking care of most of the dust particles. But it's important to wear some sort of a respirator, even so, because there's dust in the air. Now, my procedure for uh, returning a rough turn bowl to the lathe, a twice turn bowl, is what you're seeing right now. So in this position, I've spent 20 minutes or so sanding this. I've gone through 100, 120, 150, 180, and 220 grits on my power sander, on my drill, okay? And I've applied one coat of an oil right now Ordinarily, I've got a lot of things going in my shop, so I may walk away from this for half an hour, apply another coat, and then when I need to reverse chuck this, um, I'll do so and protect the inside when I put that on my drive block, but I can always go back and apply more of an oil. It's an easy thing to do. So, I am ready to reverse this and deal with the bottom. Let me take this out of my my chuck jaws and show you what I have. <clears throat> so I've got the inside completed. It's sanded, it's got some finish on it. Uh, I don't see any torn grain. This is a nice bowl, okay? Anyway, the back needs to be dealt with. I plan on taking this tenon off completely. And I've got videos discussing uh, compression fixings and expansion fixings and all I got to do at this point is just turn that away. I'm not going to go any further with that issue but I'm going to put this back between centers on my other lathe and true up this area right here, sand it and finish it and it'll be done. All right it's time to reverse chuck my bowl blank. I need to bring up my tail stock Now this robust lathe comes with a nice attachment on the side. It's a tool holder, plus it uh, has an area where you can put your tailstock. Well, let me bring you in just a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now you may ask the question about, does Sam have a vacuum? 
setup. I do not, and over the years I've just not felt I had a need for that, not turning hundreds of bowls. So I'm going to just take a piece of paper towel right there in between my my finished bowl and that is just really pretty. Bring up my tailstock like I did before. Find that indentation. Now I want to get that perfectly lined up in there. There we go. That looks really good. Tighten her down just a little bit. I don't think I need a lot of pressure on there. Lock it up. Turn my speed down and I'm going to just check it. Now this part right here is pretty much done. Sanded, finished. The next thing I'm going to do is deal with this tenon and take it off. I don't want it on there. And then I'll uh, turn the camera off and sand and finish this and show you the finished bowl. Now at this point I like to use a combination of tools. I'm going to use a um, half inch bowl gouge to deal with most of that just because it's a little bit bigger than a spindle gouge and I probably will go to uh, either a smaller bowl gouge or a spindle gouge when I get down to that area. Okay, so I'm going to just take that uh, tenon completely away. We'll get her up to about 700 RPM. All right, now if you can see this area right here, I think that's a good dimension or diameter for the final uh, surface right here in the center of my, my bowl on the bottom. I don't want to make that too small. I want this to be a food server. Uh, and I think I shouldn't go much smaller on that area that uh, the bowl is going to sit on. I'm going to move my tool rest and work my way up to this area right here. And I'll probably just do a shear scrape on that with my bowl gouge. I'm going to get a little bit more speed going. I'm right at 1000 RPM. I'm going to sand this off camera and finish it and then we'll take that little nub off. I met my scout lathe and I've sanded and put a finish on the outside of my bowl and the last thing I need to do is take off the little nub down there so I can do it in this setup here I started on my other lathe my sweet 16 but let me bring you in just a little bit closer and I'll finish this and I'll end it right here as I take this little nub off there so I wanted to show you all the elements uh, the procedure that I do when I uh, finish up a rough turn bowl. So it's a little bit difficult. There's a lot of steps and you don't have to follow exactly what I did, but I think uh, hopefully you can understand why I did the particular steps I did. So anyway, let me bring you in closer. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, get a notification.
and that really helps when when I put up a video you'll get a notice and when I do that thank you very much have a great holiday wherever you are in the world